Hi, welcome back to Petology. We have Steve Rempel here from Prairie Exotics, and he's brought some, uh, some friends here today. Mm -hmm. I've got two ball pythons here. Well, actually, there's about seven in total, but out, the big one here, this is Kahlua. That is a big python, and, and these snakes are fairly small to, to relatively to compared to other pythons yeah burmese reticulated are going to push over 20 feet 250 pounds this one here she's 15 years old so she's full size she's been this big since she's about three and uh, she's uh, like i said 15 she'll have to be about 40. can i can i, oh, can I hold her there oh wow so tell me a little bit i don't know a lot about reptiles and especially about pythons and snakes so what should i know if i wanted to you know maybe get into one of these guys they're not hard to maintain biggest commitment is getting set up originally and then your time to take care of them because they're gonna live 40 years you gotta have plans to make sure you're gonna be taking care of them the whole time uh, but as you can see here this enclosure is big enough for life for one of them uh, we have multiple here just to show off the different types of colors you can find in a ball python but uh, you want to keep one at a time in their enclosure you got a little bowl there for their water little hide you can see this guy sort of going yeah, in there going to hide in a little enclosure um, there that's pretty cool because they are a cold-blooded or ectothermic you want to have a heat pad like this Right. On the one side would be under here just to give a warm spot, helps them digest, usually about 95 degrees. Key component though, you gotta make sure you got your controller, your temp okay, controller. Because okay. without the temp controller, this guy's gonna get so hot it could burn our snake, which is definitely not good, or worse, melt and burn down the house. Yeah, no doubt. So That's when you're good. getting, so when you're thinking about, um, you know, uh, you wanna own a python or a snake, um, it's a commitment, isn't yes. it? Out of 40 years, it's not like uh, buying a hamster or getting a budgie. Yeah. You know, it's a little, it's a little more in depth. But I mean, but I once they're set up, it's easy because I mean, a lady like that, she's eating once a month. Every four or five weeks, she eats a jumbo rat the size of both of my fists. Digests over four or five days, goes to the bathroom, and she's good. So you don't have to walk her. You feed her once a month. Make sure she's got a warm spot in her water, and you're set. Um, a little guy like this, he eats every week. Uh, he's only six months old, so he'll take oh, a little while to grow baby. up. Yeah, yeah, and being a boy, he won't get quite as large, but uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely not to like that one there. Right on. Well, who else do you have here? Who else did you bring along um, uh, we today got to show us? Spider morphs. We've got a Mojave, a Lesser, and a Calider. So what people have done is you're familiar with an albino, right? The red yes, eyes, white, yes. yellow. This one's a normal wild type you'd find. They mix and match, start breeding, get different color and patterns, which are called morphs. So the fancier the morph, the more rare it is, the more money people can ask for that snake. So a normal one, we adopt these guys out for about $50 for adoption fee. Uh, if anyone's looking for a new pet, we have a number available at Prairie Exotics. Uh, but you can also find from the stores a lot of these little guys that are worth a little bit more money. This guy here would be about $500 just because he's different color and pattern. So you know, like they, 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 they seem great. Like I, I used to have a different idea about snakes, <laughs> you know, like uh, people usually think about snakes and they get either weirded out or like the, uh, you know, like the, the pop culture references to scary things. Yeah. Like are snakes good pets for kids? Oh, definitely. I mean, you wouldn't want to leave it unattended. Like anything, you don't leave your dog or cat unattended with a young child. But as you can see, they're very docile, calm species. The more you interact with them, the better they get. Yes, I am absolutely loving it. So um, this heat pad here you brought along, that's Ooh. electric, right? Yeah, you just plug it into your normal power. Well, actually plug it into your controller, controller into the wall. Uh, one of the other key aspects is you're gonna have to have your thermostat that actually tells you your temperature. So this little probe goes into the tank on the heat side, and then it tells this guy when it's at the right temperature and you're set so no one's burning down the house or your snakes for that matter. I see. So let's say um, I wanted to go out and buy a snake. Yeah. Like what, like, you know, I work, I have a job, like what kind of like care and how much care and oh. attention in a day, like how much, like, cause you know, I never get a puppy because I'm too busy to right. get a puppy. Right. But if I wanted to get maybe a snake, is that like, they're totally fine with, I mean, I'm not saying neglected, but they don't need the attention that a dog or cat do need. They'll appreciate being taken out, let you hang around on them, sitting on the couch while you're watching your Netflix or Shaw TV, whatever you might be watching. But uh, you'll want to make sure that they're, they're very happy and comfortable when they're out. So what do snakes eat? Mice and rats, rodents. Mice and rats. rats. So there's no vegetable diet no. for these guys, I guess. <laughs> no, hey? when they're really small, you start off with a little pinky mouse, then you slowly work up to a fuzzy, a hopper up to adult mice, then onto the rats um, with some of the bigger snakes, and you're also feeding like guinea pigs and rabbits and that kind of fun stuff. I just felt a barb here. What was it? That's the spur. What's the spur? The spur <laughs> on these guys, right at the tip of the tails, they got a little spur on either side. And uh, some believe that was maybe their legs that they evolved to have lost. But um, when the boys and girls are hanging out doing their lovely little dance that they do to maybe make some eggs, um, the boys actually use those little spurs to tickle the girls to get them a bit excited. Oh, a little bit of tickling. Yeah, I see. that, that wow. does happen. <laughs> okay, so and 
um, prairie dogs, uh, they breed uh, breed as well, no, correct? No, we don't really breed animals. Because we're taking in animals that are being surrendered either by Humane Society, Animal Services, the public, we don't really want to add to a problem, right? Producing okay. animals. Uh, so we just take in rescues and we adopt them out or they stay with us to be educational ambassadors at the school presentations and birthdays, stuff like that that we do. Yeah, so you guys go all over the province, right? Putting on yep. shows, educating um, kids, adults, everyone all on, over. you know, all about reptiles. Um. Yeah, we do the fairs in the summer. We do like Morris Stampede, uh, Winkler, Altona. We get up to Dauphin. Uh, and then during the week, this week, we're in Steinbeck doing presentations at the high school all week. Uh, and then weekends, we have our zoo facility. People can come in on Dublin and visit us or even just uh, have us at their birthday party if they want to have some of these visit them. That is absolutely fantastic. So, w like, what's the cost? Like, how much does it cost to, you know, get, like, a good setup or, a, you know, a starter setup? Let's say I want to get my first snake and, you know, I'm serious about it. I have, mm -hmm. like, the right attitude, the right everything. What's, what's it going to cost me to get started? You have two options. You can either start with a baby, which is a little simpler, because this one won't hit full size till it's about three years old. You can start with a simple 10-gallon tank. You can take your margarine container, put a hole in the side, that's its hide, another margarine container for water. So you can go as cheap as you want. You can get the snake for maybe $50 to $100, another $100 to set up. So you're in for $150 for 40 years. Uh, obviously, then once it's getting a little bit larger, you're going to have to upgrade to a tank. A tank like this is about maybe $200. Um, Winnipeg Reptiles has a lot of options for brand new tanks, or you can check Kijiji and pet traders for used options too. Really good, really good. So, um, as someone who knows a lot about reptiles, can like, is there a problem with mixing and matching pets? Like, you know, what if you have like, you know, they live in an aquarium, but like, what if I have, you know, a cat or a bunny or something <laughs> that, uh, you know, that this animal might naturally want to gravitate to in the, in the wild, you know? Well, again, like your children, you're not going to leave them unattended <laughs> at the same time. Otherwise, you might have a bit of a problem on your hand. Uh, in the bunny situation, after you've been petting your bunny, you want to make sure your hands don't smell like food going to touch the snake after. Otherwise, you could get a bit uh, bite. It's like me, if I'm around somebody smell like bacon, I get a little excited because it smells like something I want to eat. Okay. So it's the same thing with these little guys here. Right. Uh, but other than that, you'd be safe and sound. Um, with the cat, again, the biggest thing is the cats get interested by the movement of the snake, so having a very secure lid is great. Um, a lot of people will often use a fish tank that they've had for an enclosure. Problem with the fish tank is they're narrow and tall. Snakes need more of a floor space. They don't need the height. So okay. an actual tank like this is a little bit better than a fish tank. If you do have one sitting in the backyard or the basement, just make sure you've got a secure lid so your cat's not getting in and the snake's not getting out. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt, and they feel just amazing. Like uh, we had, we had a volunteer earlier. Uh, she, didn't, she was pretty, pretty afraid. She came of in it. shaking. <laughs> she was being led in by Blair. She's shaking, and she's like, "I don't want to even see it." And like, my what I do is I just give him a little bit of the tail and say, "Just try a little bit." And what was it? Not even five minutes, and she was holding it and touching her face just and going around, it, showing it, everyone hey? like, "Touch it, touch it," and like, like that five minutes. And that's what I love about my job is seeing people go from fearful, not understanding it, to being like. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. It must be really rewarding to do oh, that. It's one of the best parts. So now now that I have my snake set up, I know a little bit about what they're eating and I know yep. a little bit. What about health and care? Like what if my snake gets sick? What are snakes prone to, um, you know, like um, things like that? Biggest thing is respiratory infection. Uh, if the enclosure is not set up properly for the heat and it's too moist, like us, they can get a respiratory infection. So uh, Dr. Davidson at White Ridge, just down here on Skirfield, is actually a really good exotic vet. He deals with all of our animals and he's someone that could help people out if they had any problems. That's amazing. But other than that, they're, they're pretty hard. There's not a lot of issues with them. Okay, okay. And so what if, this is an extreme question, we have really cold winters here. Yes. Really cold winters. Very. And um, you know, what if there's a power outage? There's a couple options. Uh, generator, if that's obviously outside of your options. Hot water bottle, uh, things like that. Um, put them into a styrofoam box, put them in your vehicle, run your vehicle for a while until it warms up. We're not usually out of power here in Winnipeg more than a day. Yeah. And uh, there's things you can do to sort of get by. For more information on Prairie Exotics, you can visit prairieexotics.ca. And right now we're going to learn a little bit about grooming. <laughs>